Hey, how's it going guys? I'm here with Mike, aka Rockstar Rossi on 2 Plus 2. He's got a pretty cool thread in uh, Las Vegas Lifestyles, lots of poker goals and challenges. So I thought I'd just pick his brain and ask a few questions about his poker journey and see if you guys get some value out of that. So, first off, uh, how, how'd you get started in poker? Uh, hey everybody. Um, yeah, so like Carl said, basically I'm currently living in Vegas playing poker, but there's quite a backstory to it, so kinda, I won't get too in depth, but just kind of like the Cliffs notes. Um, probably a lot different than most guys that just watched what Moneymaker win some random tournament for 40 bucks up to a couple million and then started clicking buttons overnight. Like, I was actually in a corporate job at the time. And I uh, actually spent 17 years working for, as a clown, working for a clown. So a lot of people, if you've seen my thread, it's basically this clown's journey. So um, working for McDonald's, and uh, so I saw the poker thing happening on TV, but it wasn't even like in my mind. So just kind of like went through life working, working the corporate grind. Successful, but just unfulfilling unhappy and I uh, kind of just accidentally started playing a little poker for fun with some buddies did okay picked it up pretty quick I was always pretty good with you know strategy games but not like the magic gathering gurus or anything like that just more like just random whatever games I played growing up played a lot of video games but um, yeah so it was really just accidentally just found the poker and uh, I don't know I was... Okay, so that's how you got into it. So, so when did you start taking it seriously? Like, when did you actually think, okay, well, now I can make this happen. Like, I gotta get out of this job. So what was, what was the first step you took when you, like, kind of made that decision? Yeah, like, so I basically had a couple months stretch where I just made a lot of money. <laughs> and I didn't really work that hard to do it. So I was like, hmm, all right, this is kind of cool. <laughs> and then, uh, so I just kind of started taking it a little bit more serious at that point where I, I realized it's a way to make some money. But I wasn't like all gung ho. I'm gonna go play poker for a living or anything like that. And then, uh, then I stumbled onto tournaments, and I realized that I could like win a wheelbarrow full of. So this is online, right? This was live. Oh, okay. I had not even touched the online scene, so this was like mid 2000s, I guess. Okay. Uh, didn't even. I mean, I owned a computer, but I didn't like play. This was in Phoenix. This was in Phoenix. So I, I lived in Phoenix at the time, and. Um, just went to the local live casino and did that. And then I found they had tournaments there every day, so I started playing some of the tournaments. And I shipped one of their local daily tournaments for I don't know, a couple thousand dollars. And I got a, it was like a NASCAR promo tournament, so I won this sweet NASCAR leather jacket. And, you need a stock uh, car? No car, just, <laughs> just the jacket. <laughs> but um, it wasn't, you know, quite Ricky Bobby esque, but it was pretty cool. So that was kind of where I got, I just got a taste, a little glimpse of what poker had. Um, so yeah, uh, online comes a little bit later. All right. So I know we first met in Phoenix actually through a mutual friend, Duke, who you might know from uh, his thread, from sprinkling cheese to, to stacking cheddar. Yes, the pizza One man. pizza man's journey. That's actually a really good thread, so if yeah. you have your poker girls challenges, check that out. But I yeah. kind of sold that idea when I took my, when I made yeah, my Yeah, those, those are both clever, clever names. Yeah. But, uh, so we met in Phoenix, we, we actually hiked uh, Camelback Mountain, that was pretty cool. Right. So we got to know each other, and then you ended up deciding to move to Vegas, right? So I did. What, what is that decision? So, yeah, I moved to Vegas about two years ago now, um, coming right up on two years. And it was kind of a mutual thing. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we've been together for about eight years now, and she's born and raised Phoenix. I've kind of like, I was, grew up on the East Coast. Moved to the West Coast, lived in Phoenix for about the last 20 years, but she was ready for something different. And she she knows, she's been super supportive of my poker career um, as it's kind of evolved over the years. And um, she knew once I decided to quit my job and kind of like take it serious, take it serious that she either had to be on board or jump ship. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, fortunately, most women would have jumped shit, but she was stupid enough to stay. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> she but, believed in you. Yeah, and it's you know you've actually been pretty successful so far, I think. And uh, so, 
Uh, tell me about, you, you've worked with uh, this, this staking group, I'm, I'm a Whale Staking, right? So can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that? Sure, yeah, we'll plug the I'm a Whale for a little bit. I started with them, this was post Black Friday, so I'm kind of skipping over a lot of stuff, but once I, I did get into the online world a little bit, um, once I realized poker was going to be something I could do, uh, make some money at, I ventured into the online world. I joined a staking group on there called Part Time Poker, which is now obsolete. But I just networked a ton. Um, I played a ton of poker. I played all tournaments. I strictly tournaments, strictly online for like the next five years. Put in a ton of volume. Um, had some good results, like modest, but didn't ship anything like you know F tops or anything like that. But um, I had a pretty good run, a pretty solid ROI over a, a period of time, which is kind of like a. I guess those are some really valuable traits, you know, of course. So Black Friday happens, we lose our cash cow, and I'm kind of like figuring out, okay, now what? Yeah, what to do? So I dabbled a little bit on the US facing sites and it was pretty miserable. Yeah, it was like carbon grinding $5 tournaments for a buddy and I was kind of own diming some, but then I didn't really trust. I thought it's, you know, the government's gonna take all our money. So I had some guys that had money sitting around here and there. So I was just doing a little stuff and then I got uh, referred to this group called I'm a Whale um, and just happened to put in an application. And so that was about 2012-ish, middle of, middle of 2012, I think. And uh, I'm still with the group today, a uh, great group. You're probably coaching too, right? So, so a, little... a big reason why I've stuck with them is um, I not only you know do I get a pretty good profit share, but we get coaching and is involved. And then I had the opportunity to switch from playing the US facing online sites to actually playing live. And then I got to make another switch out of tournaments and back into cash games where I think the best flexibility, uh, the best like freedom and scheduling, and also hourly. And you don't crush your soul playing a tournament for six days and not make a penny. <laughs> Been there, done that. So I like, I like both worlds, but uh, yeah, the staking group has really been able to allow me to do a lot of different things that I don't think I could have done on my own bankroll and on my own without the coaching they've provided. So. Cool, shout out to I'm Real Staking. Okay, and so now for amateur players or anyone who's like a student of the game, what are your like top three tips you would provide for them that you think have helped you out? Yeah, I, I mean, number one, obviously technical, like learning the game of poker and all that is important and getting through the basics, but once you get past that, um, the, I think the biggest, absolute biggest thing is mental game. That uh, mental game of poker. I, I just I can't stress enough that you can learn how to play any hand in any position against any type of opponent all day long. But how you react to winning and losing, and how you react to a tough downswing or a, a great month. Like, do you go on winners tilt? Do you have entitlement tilt? Um, just in general our human emotions get the best of us like sometimes without us even knowing so uh, my, I highly recommend either doing some personal self-taught uh, using resources like Mental Game of Poker just to plug a couple things Mental Game of Poker by Jared Tendler amazing book but I also he also does sessions seminars you can contact him First individually some people mention that book that's like a pillar of like if you have a right. struggle in that area it's definitely a very yeah. good book. And I, I had the uh, luxury to meet with him you know, in a webinar and do a session with the actual author. Again, that was provided through the staking group. We, able to, we were able to do that. Um, some other resources you can use, a couple other books, like Poker Mindset's another big one I've heard. I actually haven't read that book. I have, um, I've read that one. It's yeah. Good. And then there's tons of podcasts out there and YouTube and whatnot. And then uh, 2 plus 2. Great thread, great area. Great like for networking. Yeah, like not only do you meet people, but like before I even started a PG and C thread, like I literally scoured it and I would just hop in and like, oh okay, who's this guy? You know, poker is hard, effing work. Let me read this guy's story and I read, go through, and like you see their struggles and and their their accomplishments and it's like it's amazing. It's like, very relatable. Yeah. You can see like everyone has their own little journey and it's cool to follow along. Right. Journey. And there's a couple of those journeys that deal a lot with mental game. So again, PGNC, a great, great resource. Shout out to PGNC. Yes. <laughs> so either self teaching yourself, and if you're not disciplined, go out and hire a coach. One way or the other, though, it's all uh, mental game in my world is where you're gonna 
see your advancement in the game. Um, so that was what would you say three things? Uh, so I mean, another one, I'll, the one that probably every poker player I'll say is volume. Without volume. Uh, you just, it's going to be really difficult to overcome. So you mean you have to have headphones that the volume goes up? Yes, turn the volume way up. So you can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like any other business. So you don't have to listen to anyone else at the table yet. Make sure you have good volume on your face. Yeah. No, what do you really mean by, what do you really mean by volume? So volume is just how many hours are we going to put in at the tables. Um, just like any business, if you have a startup business, the more time you put into it, the more effort you put into it, the more results you're going to generate from that and which brings success. The thing that makes poker unique is you can put in all the hours you want and things happen out of your control. So really the only way to overcome some of those downfalls and deficits is just to continue plugging away, putting in more hours, um, staying focused and you know, uh, quantity, very important. Quality will come from our mental game learning as we advance, but um, without the quantity, you know, we're gonna sell ourselves short. Yeah, it's, it's a long run game, so in order to get to the long run, you gotta have to play a lot. It's Absolutely. not just like play two hours here, three hours there, you gotta really put in the work. And yeah, you gotta get past the fish on a heater. And you have to actually <laughs> like see if you can do it. Yeah. So it definitely takes a lot of time. Um, let's see, something else. Uh, last thing I would say, someone that's in a relationship, and I've, I think I've talked with Carl a lot about this in the past, but like uh, having a balance in life, uh, work-life balance, pretty huge. If we just sit there, I just talked about tons of putting in a ton of hours and, and quantity of hours, but um, if away from the table our life is miserable or we don't have a support system or we're not doing other things to enjoy life, then First of all, why are we alive? But second of all, like to stay fresh at the tables, you got to get away from the tables and uh, have a have an outlet, have a place to go, things to do that are enjoyable, whether it be hobbies or uh, spending time with a significant other. All of those things are very important, very key. So I, I'm a strong believer, and I, I learned that in my corporate career. We worked our tails off 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. But when it came time to our Vacation time, it was step away, the cell phone gets turned off, the laptop's put away, we're not dealing with anything. Uh, so, yeah, time away is very important, work-life balance. Cool, those are great points. And uh, so what are your plans for uh, 2017, You're closing in on the end of 2016? Yeah, so, you know, Vegas is not my uh, end-all, be-all long-term, but uh, it's great for the now. Uh, the girlfriend and I love living, living here. We actually bought a house here, so we're we're kind of in it for the medium term. I'm not gonna say that. It's not a short term venture, but uh, I don't see it, you know, being the rest of my life or anything. Um, but my aspirations for next year, um, I've started to delve into playing deeper two five and shot taking some five ten. So I'm gonna keep on that path and you know, kind of like keep looking to move up in those stakes. But I'm very happy and very content with the flexibility that cash games have gotten me, but I also want to keep mixing back in the tournaments where my, kind of like my passion grew from. So I do hope to play a bunch of WSOP again next year. I've been playing it for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years I've been coming to Vegas playing in the tournaments. So 2017 is going to bring a lot of cash game hours, uh, hopefully a lot of tournaments, medium level of tournaments, and then, but big picture in mind is probably uh, travel the world. Cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time. I also want to present you with a little token of appreciation. It's a book that I've read. It's called uh, The Tao Te Ching. A little uh, Asian philosophy, Eastern, nice. Eastern philosophy. It's, it's pretty short. I mean, they're all like little kind of verses, but uh, right. I just want to thank you for uh, imparting us with your, your poker knowledge and sharing your journey. Definitely. That's been thanks, fun. Man. Hey, thanks a lot, Carl.